Digging a Smash TV, cruising through the Clayton area of St. Louis, Missouri, USA, part of Smash Land. Great houses, great buildings, great moogly woogly. I tell you what, just back there, we passed up the Chase, Chase Park Plaza Hotel, where they used to have wrestling at the Chase. I'll never forget working for Dick the Bruiser. I was one of the color men on his production team. And uh, I'll never forget doing a promotion with Dick the Bruiser. And he said to me, Smash, we need to promote this TV stuff a little bit bigger because they're just breaking into TV. They used to wrestle right there in the TV studio. I think it was Channel 5 in Indianapolis, right there where they did the news. <laughs> On Saturday mornings, they would have the wrestling ring. And Bruiser would be there. Cowboy Bob Ellis would be there. Lou Thez, Wilbur Snyder, the world's most you know, scientific wrestler. Bobo Brazil, the creator of the Coco Butt. You remember the Coco Butt? Now, Bruiser says to me, because we were promoting this event, I was on the radio at that time in Indianapolis, also working for the Bruiser. And he says to me, Smash, we're going to do a tag team. I said, man, I, I can't wrestle. You don't have to wrestle. It's when everything starts. You go to the corner and stand there. Me and Spike. Spike Huber was his son-in-law, but Spike looked just like a young Dick the Bruiser, and he was married to Bruiser's daughter, Michelle. So anyhow, it was Spike and the Bruiser and me. We were the good guys on this tag team tug of war. On the other side, who was it? I believe it was the Iron Sheik. Maybe even Baron Von Raschke, another heel as they were known in wrestling at that time. Maybe they're still known by that. A bad guy. He said, when the rope gets thrown to the mat, you go to the corner turnbuckle and just stay out of the way so you don't get hurt. Well, I'd been on the air for a couple of weeks talking about how I'm going to beat this wrestler's rear end and kick this wrestler's head in and this pencil neck jerk's going to fall to the floor and all that kind of stuff. I was just doing my Dick the Bruiser without... This pencil neck jerk just didn't have the bruiser rasp. I love Dick the Bruiser. So we're in the ring, the actuality of the event. I'm scared out of, the, out of my rear end because two reasons. Before the match, I was, or I was frightened. Number one, of course, wrestling. I'm not a wrestler, but bruiser showed me some moves and everything. Number two, were they going to make me put on a wrestling Speedo? I don't look good in a Speedo never really had, even when I had a virility to me that was unquestionable. Cha-cha, let's move. Are you not moving? Car in front of me is not moving. So what's that mean? I'm stuck and I can do one of two things. I could be angry. I could go out there. I could honk like that, but I'm not going to. Maybe he's got himself a problem right there. Now, do I get mad or do I get out of the car and become Dick the Bruiser and tell this sad sack of steaming you know what to move or do i nice and calmly remain here because he has some reason for being there i can't get out because i'm tied in between there and tied in between that same thing happened to me at the tag team tug of war that day what happened when the rope met the floor oh i sir smash you dude said either i am going to or you but you, the guy didn't move until the light turned red. Okay, okay, don't. That's the way it was at the tag team tug of war, all right? I maintained my cool, but at the same time, I had an aggression that had to be dealt with. And so, the rope hits the floor. What am I supposed to do? Go to the corner, turnbuckle, stay out of the way so that Bruiser and Spike Huber could beat the bad guys. But I thought to myself, well, I've been talking about this for, a, what, two weeks. I'd better get out there and wrestle, although it's my fans, Smash fans, are gonna be quite angered with me. So I went and wrestled. And I jumped on top of the back of the Iron Sheik, the Sheik, and uh, I said, it's me, Smash. I, I didn't whisper, I said, it's, it's me, Smash, so he knew who was jumping. Because if he thought it was Bruiser jumping, then you know he'd have done an actuality wrestling move. But if he knew it was me, he might not have beat the living daylights out of me. He let me pound him on his back. Blam, blam, 
blam like that three times and then fell to the floor like something happened to him. <laughs> I remember it so well. And then I ran back to the, the turnbuckle and by then Bruiser and Spike had seen that I had gotten involved when I wasn't supposed to get involved. So I think what they thought was we better end this sooner than we thought we were going to end it because now Smash has got to do one of two things. Either stay in the turnbuckle, which we see he doesn't listen to us, or number two, get back out there and wrestle one of the second guys, all right? Because now the Iron Sheik should be mad at you for beating him on top of the back on his shoulder blades and knocking him to the ground because he's the Iron Sheik. He could have put you in a camel clutch at any particular time, no problem whatsoever. So Bruiser and Spike Huber beat the bad guys. We won the tag team tug of war. And that was my experience in the wrestling ring without even having to put on a wrestling speedo because they wanted me to stay like smash, smash, digging the smash. I was on a radio in my radio outfit. In fact, I wore a pair of headphones around my neck to show them that I'm smash, the radio guy, wrestling. And that was my one experience in the ring as an actual wrestler. However, the time I got challenged to a fight by Big John Studd a number of years later. I'll tell that story at another time as you continue digging the Smash TV. But boy, I'll never forget being in a ring like that, being scared like that, beating up on a guy who I know could have snapped me with his fingers, no problem whatsoever. And yet coming out of that, being an employee of the Dick the Bruiser Empire, becoming his color man on TV, Working with Dick the Bruiser on a constant basis, helping him with his wrestling career as far as media was concerned, that was a magnificent era. Just remembering things like that. And one of the great things about digging the Smash TV is that when the Smashheimers comes in and I don't remember a thing anymore, I can look back on that. And if I recognize myself, I believe I actually did something in my life. So this is not only just enlightening for you, Grasshopper, this is therapeutic for moi. And with that in mind, I say, hey, not only have you been digging a smash, but uh, I've been digging a smash by now.